episode features Jessica Method, an assistant professor in the School of Management and Labor Relations at Rutgers University. Jessica teaches Introduction to Human Resource Management in the Department of Human Resources and makes a point to integrate innovative new technology into her lectures to engage students and to encourage interaction with course content during lectures. We sat down and talked about the way she utilizes different technologies in the classroom and her teaching background. Okay, so one thing that really fascinates me um, from some of the background research that I've been doing sure. on you is that um, at one point you had said to students, and I totally empathize with this because I say the same, um, you know, no laptops, no technology in the classroom, yes. no cell phones. Yes. And then you realized that they were not particularly complying with that. Right. And then you thought, well, why keep resisting this? Exactly. Let's actually use it yes. in the classroom. And that really, really fascinates me. So I'd love to ask you what you do specifically with technology. Absolutely. And that is how I started. Um, you know, I'd actually initially started teaching these same courses at a different university. I was at the University of Florida. Those courses oh. were restricted to be a lot smaller, 35 mm -hmm. to 40 students. Oh, wow. So I was used to having a smaller classroom of students, being very aware of what they were doing. I could see every student. Um, and when I came here and started teaching at Rutgers three years ago, I did start out with classes of 80 students. Last semester, I had a class of 190 students. This is um, the price of popularity. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, and especially, you know, these universities of these large sizes, their introductory mm -hmm. courses. Um, I was happy to do it. I'm so glad that we can have you know, human resources now as a major and as a minor and that it, the class is in demand. Uh, but it really struck me as very difficult to try to figure out how to monitor these kinds of behaviors. Again, in a class of 40 students, I could easily say, I can see you using your cell phones, put yes. them away. Yes. Uh, let's ban all of these kinds of technologies. Um, but as this kind of started evolving, these class sizes started getting larger, and as the students started becoming more reliant on technology, mm -hmm. because eight, mm -hmm. ten years ago, yes. it really wasn't as popular. And so mm -hmm. we've seen this explosion in these students mm -hmm. just not being able to spend an hour and 20 minutes away from their cell phones. <laughs> right. um, I really kind of just decided to embrace it. Why force them to put these things away if they really are starting to learn that way. They have different learning techniques. Um, it's the way that they kind of process information, the way that they interact with these kinds of technologies. And I said, why restrict it? Let's try to figure out a way to engage them by using these kinds of technologies. I'd love to know more about how specifically you use them and also whether they are also a distraction or only a benefit. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm sure you hear this a lot from the instructors that you speak with, uh, but there are some challenges that we face when we're teaching. Uh, one is these large class sizes, 80, 190 students. How do we keep track of attendance? Uh, we want to. I want to give them credit for being there. I want to recognize that they're taking time out of their day to come to the class, uh, but it's really difficult to be able to do that and not uh, distract or take time away from valuable class time. Uh, another really cha big challenge that I've faced is getting all of them to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes. when they are more shy students and I ask a question, they kind of rely on the more talkative students to answer all of them. So there's six, 10, maybe 15 students that are answering all of the questions. And I really wanted to get everyone to participate. Um, also, I wanted them to be engaged. So it's really hard. You know, a lot of these students, they're very tech savvy. Their learning strategies are a little bit different. And they're just not as engaged by these linear lectures anymore, standing up at a podium and talking at them for an hour and 20 minutes. They need a little bit more activity, more gaming types of things, engagement. So that was a challenge. Um, and so I was really trying to figure out a way to do all of those things while adapting to their new learning styles, this learning style that I wasn't familiar with. Uh, so I thought, well, why not allow them to use their cell phones in class, their computers in class, their tablets in class in a way that's relating to the course content instead of acting as this distraction because, as I'm sure a lot of instructors know, they've become extremely adept at hiding that they're <laughs> using these <laughs> devices the during <laughs> class. They're like in their yeah, pockets exactly. texting. Right. Um, you know, they're looking down. They think you can't see them. And so it is happening. And so I thought, well, if I can't really prohibit it, and there's no way to really stop them from doing these things and distracting them, then I'm just going to incorporate it. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to allow them to do it. So what I started to do is use an audience response system. I started researching how to get them to 
interact with the course content and with me rather than just through these formal lectures. So I looked into these eye clickers. I'm sure you guys mm -hmm. have heard of them or familiar with them. A lot of faculty are using them on campus, but it just wasn't right for what I was looking for. Um, it's got a, a hardware and a proprietary software that needs to go uh, with these uh, devices. The students need to purchase these eye clickers mm. and they can be a little bit awkward sometimes. So the students aren't really sure how to use them immediately. And so I wanted something that was a little more seamless, that I could go right into the classroom with my laptop when I lecture. They can pull out their cell phones and respond to a question. And so I've been able to use these polls. I started uh, using, so this was three years ago, uh, two and a half years ago that I started to do this, uh, using a website called Poll Everywhere. So I started beyond attendance when I saw that this started working really well. Yes. Um, I started to... Um, integrate poll questions throughout the lecture as well. So two or three questions that I would put up yes. that were related to an article that I had them read before class mm -hmm, to make mm -hmm. sure that they were paying attention to the takeaways, um, you know, things that I wanted to, to test their knowledge on, make sure that they were really uh, grasping what I thought was important. And so I started to contribute that towards their participation yes. grades as well. Yes. I would still ask questions in class. I want them to speak up. I okay. want them to participate and, and answer questions out loud. But again, that kind of eliminates this problem of just the select few being the sure. ones who are offering their answer. But how do you blend in, especially with a large number of students, sure. the trying to encourage some people to speak out loud Absolutely. and also read what's going on electronically? Yes, and it's not easy for me to let go of that. I like a lot of participation in class. Out loud. Uh, yeah, out loud, yes. exactly. I want them talking. I want to, them to Mm -hmm. debate. I want them to hear each other's opinions. Uh, so oftentimes I'll work off of a poll question. I'll start with a poll question, nice. a very general question, and I'll say, let's discuss this a little bit. Why do you feel this way? Someone who responded this answer, mm -hmm. why did you respond mm -hmm. that way? Uh, and so that kind of gets them. Also, once they know the correct answer, they're more likely okay, <laughs> to nice. talk a little sure. bit more about it. So I'll say, okay, this was correct. Who responded that and why? Uh, where did that come from? Where in the article did you read that? Why did you interpret it that way? And so they're more comfortable opening up versus is just the, taking this risk mm. of, oh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to be embarrassed in front of my peers. So you'll say at the time, oh, this response by Tom or whoever it is was really right on. This well, is really good. Yeah, so I'll bring something like that up. And actually, one of the things that I started doing just last semester with this really large class, I'm not sure if familiar, you're familiar with gamification tools. Yeah. Um, it's taking these kind of mundane behaviors. It's, it's applied in organizations for performance management, for motivation, um, to try to engage employees. And so I thought, why not draw this concept into class? So I'm going to take these polls and turn it into a game. So they're also competing against each other. Hmm. So the students who get the most question poll questions right before every exam get extra credit. So how did you get interested in teaching in the first place? As a PhD student, they do have you teach classes. It's free labor, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I started teaching an organizational behavior class and a human resources class uh, while I was going through my PhD program. So again, I was focusing largely on research. That's what we were trained to do. That's where these uh, research ideas really stemmed from and what I'm still working on. But when I started teaching, I really kind of developed a passion for it. Mm -hmm. I loved getting to know the students. Mm -hmm. I loved hoping hoping that they were going to become passionate about the, this kind of content. You know, teaching business students is difficult because they really understand the importance of the concrete business ideas, finance, economics, ways to place numbers on these things. Yes. When they start to take human resources yes. and organizational behavior, they say, oh, this is kind of common sense. Why do I need to take a class about this? Why do I need to learn how to manage people? And when they go through these classes, it, kind of a light bulb goes off. Mm -hmm. And I love seeing that mm -hmm. click for them. Yes. It really isn't common sense. We really do need to understand what motivates our employees, how we can retain them, why retention and turnover is so important, how expensive these things are, how we can save our organization's money. Uh, and so seeing that and kind of watching them and getting them so engaged and figuring out ways to, um, you know, adapt to their learning styles and get them interested in the content, it really just grabbed me. Yeah, do you have any um, suggestions for any new teachers or struggling teachers, anything that you... Mm -hmm. I mean, you're doing so many new and exciting things ah, yourself, and as you said, you kind of started in a way from mm -hmm. scratch, which you saw as a benefit, because mm -hmm. the field was open for you to kind yes. of create it as you wanted. Yes. 
But what if there are people who didn't have that kind of optimism or, <laughs> <Sure> . or you know, natural talent, whatever? What, oh, what would you recommend to them? Absolutely. You know, I guess my, my biggest advice is just be yourself when you are teaching.、Um, you know, people, when they're starting out to teach, try to say, well, what kind of, what kind of professor am I going to be? How am I going to interact with the students? It becomes very、um, energy depleting, very exhausting to try to behave in a way that you're not comfortable、mm-hmm. with.、Mm-hmm. And so if you just re- interact with the students, they can see that you're being genuine. They can see that you're being authentic. If you show that you care about them and you want them to learn and you care about the content, that will come through. And I think that's really important to just be yourself. Now we begin the quick fire part of the program where professors answer a fun questionnaire. Professors respond with the first thing that comes to mind, letting us learn a little more about the person and his or her approach to teaching. What is your favorite word? There's one word that I think you just like to say <laughs> it's betwixt. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> When you very... hear it, you just want to say it, and you just want to say it again. There's something about it betwixt. That's、right? not very、you、Dickensian.、Yes. <laughs> Do you have a least, and again, it can be discipline specific or not,、sure. a least favorite word? Oh, God. <laughs> or many? I have, I have many least favorite words as well, but for different reasons. There are two words that I can't stand、um, there and your. And it's because people use their forms incorrectly all the time. Quite right.、Mm-hmm. All right. What do you find? The most exciting about the start of a new semester? Oh gosh, if it hasn't come through already, I think a lot of it is just getting to learn from the students. Anything that's the least exciting about the start of a new semester? <sighs> you know, this is something that I always challenge. <laughs> Challenge myself to do, and it is the thing that I like the least is I love getting to know the students, but learning their names、wow. is so. Especially with 190. Yes, yes, and I try very, very hard to do it. In the class of 190, it was very tough. What do you love to see in the classroom? Their eyes.、Oh, nice. <laughs> I love to see their eyes. I love, you know, I love when they're not. Fussing around or doing something else or talking with their friends, and I know that they're focusing on me and focusing on the content. If they're looking up, I know that they're paying attention. Is there anything you hate to see in the classroom? I mean, you basically said it. Right. right? <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. The texting, the messing <laughs>、yes. around. The, I,、yes. I also don't like to see empty seats.、Mm. Uh, you know, having them there is energizing to me. I love, you know, getting them actively、Very、engaged.、Nice. And if people aren't there, the empty seats. Mm-hmm. You know, are kind of upsetting as well. They don't、yes. come to class, and、yes. you say, "What can I do?" I think、yes. that's the challenge for me as well. What can I do to make them want to come? If you could study any other discipline <laughs> other than your own, what do you think that might be? Any other discipline? You know, I'm not quite sure that there's another field of study that I would go in. I always see myself. If I had the choice in another career, which is totally unrelated, oh, what would、um, that be? Floral design. Oh, lovely! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's something about just the beauty and the simplicity、Ooh. of flowers、oh, <laughs> and、nice. of the artistic side of things. Is there a discipline that you would not want to ever study? Mm-hmm. I, you've probably heard this answer before. I would not want to study entomology. I wouldn't want to study insects. <laughs> <laughs> If you were a florist, you might see more of them. I know. <laughs> I what you know would be outside. <laughs>、exactly. um, and last question: If you could attend a master class taught by anyone else,、uh, anyone at all, whose class might you want to attend? If I could take a course from anyone, one of the things that I've always just found so fascinating is writer, director, producers. I think there are three people that really stand out to me, and if they could jointly teach a class on writing, <laughs> producing, and directly, I would be there. It would be Steven Spielberg,、mm-hmm. Wes Anderson,、mm-hmm. and、um, the Pulp Fiction. Director, writer, and director,、uh, Quentin Tarantino. Yes. <laughs> well, I think we've covered basically everything, and this has been really amazing. To it was it. so great to be here. Thank you so much. Wonderful questions. I、oh. love talking about them and answering them. Oh, thank you. And it's been <laughs> fascinating hearing all the things you have to say. So、thank、dynamic、you. and exciting、oh, as a teacher.、So、That's、much. wonderful. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>